All right, guys, I am back with another video. So I wanted to, <clears throat> I wanted to do one real quick on this. So a lot of people seem to be confused as to how uh, virtual shadow maps actually work, why they're performance heavy and so on and so forth. So I wanted to show you in this scene, I have virtual shadow maps turned on. And so I'm going to do a stat FPS to show the frame rate is about 70. Now this is a fairly uh, complex scene, but uh, the models are fairly simplistic, so it shouldn't be hitting that low. So if we do stat unit, you'll see that's on the GPU, uh, 14 millisecond hit. So what's causing that? If you, Oh, let me, there we go. If you just type in profile GPU, a lot of people don't use this. It's a very useful tool. Uh, I believe everyone should take the time to learn to use it. It's very useful. I have uh, debugged and resolved several issues in my own projects using this. So if we go to scene, also, if you noticed, I pressed this button right here until this was at the top. And you'll see that the heaviest hit is right here on the scene and the heaviest one out of everything is shadow depths. And if we look at this, it says render virtual shadow maps, non nanite. And it's referencing uh, the light source. Actually, I have two light sources in here, so I'm getting two hits off of this. I don't know why I have two light sources in here. I think uh, this map comes with two light sources for some unknown reason. They have two of them. <laughs> so you're getting twice the hit, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but anyway, so if you expand both of these, you'll see we are getting a 3.39 millisecond hit off of that one and a 2.35 millisecond hit off of that one. Rasterize, what is that? So let me explain to you. Virtual shadow maps were designed for nanite. Nanite is virtualized geometry and virtual shadow maps are virtualized shadows. So you, if you're familiar with virtual textures, they're stored and rendered in a different way. So I'm not going to go into that because honestly, I don't know all the details, uh, but I will tell you that it seems that for virtual uh, shadow maps, they can easily be uh, combined and used with each other. If something is not a virtual, uh, is not virtualized, uh, such as regular geometry, then it has to rasterize it. And that's just a process that converts it into a format that the GPU can then use to render that onto the trees and whatever else onto the geometry. So with the virtualized shadow maps, the reason why they have such a heavy hit is because uh, of that right there. So shadow depths is taking both most of that. So if we come up here to project settings, you'll see, and I should uh, go ahead and let y'all know that 5.1 is going to support nanite foliage. Now, uh, that's world position offset and uh, mast materials is, is actually what they're adding support for. Now, the reason why they're doing that um, is mostly, from my understanding, because of this issue right here, where you have a lot of non-nanite geometry in the scene, and it has to rasterize it. That's an extra pass, and it's an expensive one. So in order to compensate for that, they are adding, uh, they have went ahead and pushed to add support for Massed materials such as leaves and world position offset such as the movement on the leaves. 
and the trees. So in 5.1, that will be added, and it'll be added for this very reason, because people want to use this in their scenes, but uh, as you know, most games have foliage, and uh, that makes uh, a big problem because you get this 40 uh, frame per second hit on any project that uses nan uh, that uses virtual shadow maps with uh, non-virtualized geometry such as foliage. So you won't you may not get that big of a hit on or you may not get much of a hit at all if you're not using foliage because I'm assuming that you'll have everything as nanite but if you have a scene and it doesn't have foliage but it has a lot of stuff in it and it is non nanite then if you use virtual shadow maps this will cause a 40 millisecond uh, 40 frame per second hit on your scene so I'm sure that'll vary depending on your hardware. And so you should probably look at it in milliseconds. That's the reason why they uh, have the GPU profiler. So uh, a 3.39 millisecond hit for me, uh, that could be quite a bit larger for you if uh, you don't have uh, heavy hardware, uh, expensive hardware like I do. So. Uh, if we come down here and we turn virtual shadow maps off, you'll see that the frame rate immediately jumps up, jumps up to uh, 120. That's a, that's a, um, I believe that's a, a 40 frame per second hit uh, on this scene. Now on my other scene, and it's a more complex scene, uh, if you've seen the other videos, I get the same hit on that scene as well. And that's because my foliage is not nanite. But you'll see the difference it makes and really that doesn't look bad uh, this scene was designed without virtual shadow maps in mind so the leaves blend together pretty nicely it does add a uh, a nice touch to it though depending on what you're going for but I just thought I would do a video on that and explain that to you guys because I've had to explain that to two different people over the past two days and I think people are having a hard time understanding that virtual shadow maps is new and it's not something that a lot of people have discussed this is uh, information that I have kind of extrapolated myself from putting two to two two and two together and uh, and uh, using the GPU profiler so just remember profile GPU that's how you do that and I will see you guys in the next video I will try to start doing more videos from here on out and I apologize for the gaps and not getting around to a lot of your requests. So with that being said, uh, if you found this helpful, make sure to like down below and uh, consider subscribing. Thanks.